Well, let's do uh, let's do the um, the rapid fire. You guys ready for some rapid fire? Hit that subscribe bell and join hashtag nation. I snuck a little Easter egg in on Paul. Sure did. Peace sizzle. Peace sizzle. Uh, so he doesn't trust me to do episodes on my own anymore. <laughs> no. Because his roasting of me in the comment section has gotten worse and worse. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I love it. Pretty awful. But uh, we're, So we're going to do a rapid fire together. So here we go. Uh, who makes the roster? Duke Johnson or David Sills? Both. Ooh. Next. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Do you think both are going to make the roster? It's supposed to be rapid. I get rapid, but I mean, I need more words than both. Um, both have practice squad eligibility. Okay. It depends on how you show them out in the preseason, whether or not they make it snagged by somebody else. I right. think Duke gives you that go up and get it guy. I think Sills is one of those sneaky players you want to work with for another year before you put him on the field. Okay, so, so you're you not saying sneak... both on the active roster? No, no, no. no, no, no. Oh, okay, no. okay, okay. I would say one and one. I think one makes the active. I don't know yet because I, I haven't been at OTAs. I haven't seen anything. I think one makes active, one is practice squad, but they're both still here. Yeah, just just rolling on the hype train. Um, I have to think that David Sills is practice squad, is a practice squad guy. He was yeah. a UDFA, so again, it, nobody drafted him. Um, he, that's a player you can often slide to the practice squad just as long as um, you know he doesn't have a great preseason. I think you just have to be careful with David Sills. Um, Duke John or Duke Williams could absolutely make this team. With with all with everything being even at wide receiver, Duke John uh, Duke, Duke Johnson. Why do you keep saying Duke Johnson? Because I'd like to have him here too. Yeah. No, I don't. Mm -mm. No. No, no. I'm done with Duke Johnson. Oh, okay. Do you know why? I know. Because you're a man of principle. I am a man of principle. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so, uh, how is our team stacking up against the rest of the division? Well, when you have the. Um, when your quarterback is in his second year and is one of the is one of the veterans of more the veterans of the division, <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. Uh, as far as everything else, they have familiarity with the, within the division. The Dolphins are in a rebuild year. They have a new coach. The Jets have a new coach. Senator Palpatine's there in New England still. I mean, it's uh, it's very tough to kind of gauge what's going on. You think that. If everything played out the way it should play out, the Bills would probably be in second place in the division, stacking up. Uh, you have, you know, you know, if you wanted to talk about opponents that you have to go up against, you got Kenyon Drake run, running the ball down in Miami. Mm -hmm. You got Le'Veon Bell. You have Sony Michelle. Those are three tough running backs that have to yeah. bring down. That bring three completely different dynamics to the uh, to their offenses. Brady, you always got to try to get to Brady. Uh, we don't know if Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick was going to do his homework. You know, you don't you don't benefit any by blitzing him either. Right. Um, and then you got uh, you got Darnold, who's improving in his second year, who's uh, you know drafted third overall. So you have all of these things. Mosley's now in the division. Um, you got Bennett, that's now in the division, uh, coming over from Seattle. Uh, and down in Miami, what other moves did they make down in Miami? I can't really remember. It's Miami though. They're still in, like, like I said, a rebuild. Matter. But you have a lot of new moving parts in the division, so it allows for a lot of unknowns. And that's and the Bills, too. So stacking up, I think right now it's still New England's division, if I'm being completely fair. And the Bills, I think, are like the next most talented team underneath. That. This is a good year for the Bills to strike because, yes, you're coming in off a six-win season, which isn't much to write home about. Mm -hmm. However, you do have an incumbent coaching staff. You do have a relatively incumbent defense, right? Yes. Your whole defense is intact. That's huge. Uh, no other team is as intact as the Bills are from a defensive standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, within the division in the first five, six weeks is all about defense. Um, and you get a couple division games at the beginning of the season. So I think if you, yeah. if you can sweep Miami, if you can split with the Jets, and you can split with the Patriots, you're four and two inside the division. All you have to do is just, if you're going to lose games, just lose the NFC games. Right, and now you're really in the hunt for the division. So, well, it's weird because they're playing the NFC least this year. Right, so they may have a good shot at sweeping that. But we've talked about this on another. Yeah, episode. exactly. You're gonna lose games. Don't lose the AFC sweep, games. Sweep the North. Right. Just don't sweep the NFC ones. Right. 
Um, so I, as far as the division goes, I expect the Bills to sweep Miami. I expect the Bills to split with the Jets, although they do have a new coaching staff. The Jets always seem to squeak one out against us. It just Because Greg Williams is a lunatic. Greg Williams is crazy. Yes. He's crazy. You don't know what um, he's going to bring at Allen. Yeah, I agree with that. Guy was responsible for Bounty Gate. You don't think he's going to try to take Allen's legs out? I mean, he's been with like 18 different teams, but I mean, he's still in the league for a reason. Because he's effective. Right. Yeah, It's exactly. Um, and then again, I think you just kind of hope to split with, with the Patriots. But getting them early, I'd rather have the the Patriots early than late. Mm -hmm. uh, we get them, we get them their first game early in the season, so I'm I'm all right with that. What do you guys listen to for sports banter and news? You want me to take this one? Yeah, we we don't. I do not listen to local radio. I watch this I, YouTube channel called Hashtag oh, Sports. Yeah, yeah, you do watch it because you have to edit all this crap. You get to watch it more than anybody else. I am sick of this channel. <laughs> I hate these guys. I, I'm the. You guys have been talking about the one guy that gives the thumbs down every week. Yeah, it's me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced that there's one or two people that subscribe to our channel just to thumbs down every video. That's. I. I. You know what? A long right. time ago. It's America. Have a good time. Before we even started. <laughs> before we even started this whole hashtag thing, um, when my son was very very young. His nap used to be right in the morning when he used to wake up, and I used to be home with him. Uh, we used to, I used to watch uh, First Take mm -hmm. with Stephen A. and uh, Skip. Yeah. And there, there will be varying opinions, both, sure. both basically, on, uh, on, on Skip it and uh, Stephen A. But I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the back and forth. And you know what? I, I, I learned a lot just from them guys going back and forth because you can learn just as much from somebody of what not to do than what to do. Right. I mean, those guys are getting paid millions of dollars to be on TV. Sure. I mean, I could bag on them all I want, but that they're there for a reason. Right. Whether or not you agree or disagree with, with, with a lot of things that they're saying, that's fine. Um, but it helped to shape a lot of the things that we do here mm -hmm. as far as, you know, how we're going to approach how we discuss points. Right. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. So the only thing that I really listen to... Um, and it's it's very rarely is when I get some time in in the vehicle by myself, which is not often. Yeah. When you have kids, you, you know you're often going someplace with the kids. Um, Drive, but, driving you to your swim lesson. Right. Exactly. Like you're always going somewhere. Um, so I'll turn on NFL Radio on Sirius because they they have pretty good coverage. I oh. like listening to them around draft time because they get all the prospects in. Oh um, yeah, yeah. So you get that real quick 10, 15 minutes with them. Um, with each prospect, so that's always they're a good resource there. But as far as day-to-day -day Bills news um, or NFL news, I really don't follow much. Um, you know, I just kind of uh, uh, do the best I can to stay off of like your mainstays, like ESPN, and I, I try and stay away from that yeah. stuff because it, it's very manufactured. I don't banter, really. Yeah, it, I don't really like that. It's weird too because the, on ESPN, as far as I know, last time I watched it was just, it's just a collection of panel shows. Yeah, that's and, that's it. That's all it is now. And I don't. Yeah. And you know this from being a parent. I mean, I don't really watch television throughout the week. Yeah, I don't. I'm too yeah. busy editing this crap. Yep. Yeah. I'll probably read more. Um, oh yeah. I'll yeah. read more articles than I do anything else. So you, you you know you start to learn the guys to follow in different markets. So like yes. you know the guys to follow within the AFC East, like the sports writers within the AFC East, and then you start looking for some like local fan sites to give you a local perspective, and you just kind of follow different things you know about a, a team that you're coming up against in the next three four weeks. Um, but again, it's all opinion. That's the great thing about sports is it's all just guess. It's all opinion. Mm -hmm. Very little of it. You know, the, these sports writers and ESPN, and these guys don't really have a, a, a back door into the team facility, so they don't really know anything more than anybody else. They're just educated guessers. I, that's what kind of makes them fun um, because uh, you can call their opinions garbage, and uh, you can mean it. Double nickel zero? Yep. 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 For those guys who are not local, you do not feel the pain of, uh, of our local sports coverage. It is it's pretty, pretty brutal. The Patriots weren't in the division. Who would be the Bills' biggest rival? Because everyone hates the Patriots. I think the Jets. I, I don't think Miami's done. Because the I New think, York thing. The whole yeah, thing. I think I think that's I th I think the Jets would be the next biggest. Right. I, I love the, the Holy Rex connection. I love the Holy Trinity from the twenty-eight quarterback draft. Are now all in the East. Yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? What's right? weirder than that? The only one. And I mentioned Baker. this to you before. And and yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh well, Jackson. Jackson's in. Uh, the north. And, 
But they're oh, all yeah. in the AFC. They're all in the AFC, yeah. So you got three in one division, two in the other. Yeah, it's it's super a, weird, right? It's a, no, but the interesting thing, you're going to get mad at me for this because it's the 83 draft. If, if Elway never made the trade to the Broncos, do you know that all five of the teams in the AFC East would have new quarterbacks that yeah. year? Yep. You had O'Brien with the Jets, Eason with the Patriots. Kel, uh, Elway would have been with the, the Colts, which were in the AFC East. You had Kelly. And um, what team am I missing? Marino? Did yeah. you say Marino? So Marino, Eason, yeah. O'Brien, Elway, and Kelly would all have been in the same division. God, I can... Is that insane to you, thinking of that? Somebody brought up Ken O'Brien in, in the comments section on another video talking about the draft because that had come up right mm -hmm. uh, I was like oh my god I could die I could die happy Ken O'Brien got mentioned on a hashtag comment section and here it is in an episode great let's talk about the the marvelous Ken O'Brien for a minute you've been mentioning Jabron Hamden multiple times on shows <laughs> for a long time yes yeah the legend of Jabron Hamden legend of Jabron Hamden I think, but I think with Miami, that that rivalry is a little dead. Of course, Squish the Fish is always going to, you know, resonate with a lot of Bills fans because it's a bit of tradition. But the whole Rex Ryan connection to the Jets, I think there's a bit of disdain for the Jets, um, and they've also been in a similar circumstance as constantly changing coaches, constantly changing general managers. So that's a little bit of a battle of the worst. Um, squish the wait, Squish the Fish, ground the Jets, and kill Brady. What was the third one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take out his knees. Just kidding. Yeah, take out his knees. Um, surprise uh, cuts. Foster. Oh. No, I'm not. No, I'm just oh, saying. Oh, man. See? See? That reaction oh. right there Ooh. is what's going to be the reaction of a lot of people if certain cuts happen. Ooh. I don't think Foster. I'm only kidding. Okay. Right. But what I'm saying is there's going to be some fan favorites that are gone. Yep. And I think it's easier now to prepare yourself for that. Yep. That happening because... I know it sounds stupid. I know it sounds like we're beating a dead horse here, but the, th the guys that were here on a six and ten team may not be here for a team that's going to be poised to make a run at the playoffs right. and or have a winning record. Right. So I only say Foster because the guy was practice squad up and down, main roster up and down. Right. Then he finally showed out at the end of the year, did awesome. But can that translate into another year? Right. He had the familiarity with Dave Old being in Alabama, knowing his offense, knowing how the calls were. It seemed like he had a decided advantage over a lot of the players that were going on, but still had that up and down until Shady had a nice little talk with him. Right. Uh, he's one of your biggest receivers that you have. He's one of your best deep threats. I'm not saying it's him. I'm saying that if there were other players on this team that may get the... Well, it receivers, probably could happen. I don't wide know. Wide receivers are good, a good well to yeah. go to because you take a look at the incumbent wide receivers, right? And McKenzie, Raymond McLeod, those guys easily could McLeod be gone. could be gone. Yeah, McLeod could be gone. McKenzie could, McKenzie be, gone, could be gone. A lot of people really liked him. Again, really, McKenzie yeah. and McLeod are, are kind of tied well, together. Well, but you, McKenzie, McLeod, Sills, they're, they're, all their fates are tied together. Well, they, the um, reason why that is is because they picked up Roberts from the Jets. Right. Roberts exactly. is that gadget guy now. Right. What yeah. do you do? You have three, four gadget guys. Right, exactly. So some of them got to go. So who's it going to be? Um, I would say a surprise cut. And I know it's it's sometimes joked about between our inner circle of guys we talk to. Mm -hmm. Waddle. Yeah. That would be a surprise cut for me. Really? That would be a surprise. He's done everything he could to endear himself exactly. to the Buffalo. Exactly. That's really, why. He's ingrained that's himself why in the think, Buffalo. Because people, of that. People would be hurt by that. I think that's why. Because people like, have, oh man, this guy's really embracing the town. Yeah. He's in, his wife's very involved in everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. If he gets cut. Yeah, it's wow. gonna feel like it's all for nothing, right? Yeah, he's doing everything he can to show that he's culture fit. Like you, can't, you definitely can't say that that he's not ingrained himself in trying to ingrain himself into the culture of Buffalo. Mm -hmm. no, I 100 percent agree with that. Um, I'm gonna stay away from the wide receivers for surprise cuts. Okay. Because again, the well is pretty deep there. Um, I'm gonna go with Kevin Johnson's surprise cut. Oh, I hate you. Uh, I just did that because I, you're on another episode. You said he was gonna be a starter. Just saying. Well, no. I, again, you're looking at the you're looking at the cornerbacks similar to the wide receivers, right? Kevin Johnson, EJ Gaines. You, you're not really committed to EJ Gaines at all. Mm -hmm. So Kevin Johnson, EJ Gaines. One of them might not make this team. Um, if you're looking at keeping, um, you know, again, you need a lot of depth here. But um, Kevin Johnson or EJ Gaines, one of them, one of them could be gone. I'm just saying it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I think it's a possibility. Oh, do you guys play fantasy football and do you draft Bills players? Last year in the Dynasty League that we're in, I picked up Josh Allen 
for like a dollar. Mm-hmm. Bless you. Thank you. And yeah. I've, I've had multiple offers for Josh Allen. Oh, sure. The yeah. long and the short of it is this. I am insufferable when it comes to fantasy football. Every trade I hate. Mm-hmm. It's not even mine. No, nope. you hate every trade. I hate every trade for some reason because, as has been stated to me many times, there's two different types of football. There's fantasy and there's real. I take the real knowledge that I have and try to apply it to fantasy. It yeah, doesn't don't work. Worry that way. It's like, what, you're trading these two? What the, what the, all this other stuff. That's one. I'm insufferable when it comes to fantasy yeah. football. And a hashtag fantasy football league is not out of the realm of possibility. Oh, that could be fun. That could be a really good time. That could be fun. That's one. Two, this guy always makes one trade with me every year. And never wins a game for the rest no, of the year. No, it happens every year. He gives my team drades every Drake. year. If you've seen the league, Dirty you know, Randy, yeah. you'll know this one. Yeah, you'll know drades. I get, I get. He gives my team drades every year, every year. He changes icon the one year to a buzzsaw because yeah. every team he played scored the most points that week, <laughs> all season. I, I like the third most points. You were the third league. in the league, and you went three and ten. <laughs> I got my ass kicked. <laughs> this is this is what happened. You know? And yet, the one title that I have. You still want to play? You had the softest schedule ever. You did. You You're did. like the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Uh, you're uh, you're my Drake. <laughs> oh my, my Drake. god! <laughs> well, that, still, that might means I might win a title this year. Hey, though. hey, that's fine. I'm gonna wear a shirt next week that just says Paul on it. <laughs> you're Drake. So, uh, I pick yeah, my we, kids up. <laughs> we do primarily. Um, we do primarily like to play dynasty football leagues because they're just a bit more fun. Dynasty versus keeper versus just your standard draft league. So we like to play dynasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just it just makes the game a bit more fun. Um, you're making deals that you wouldn't make in any other league because of salary cap and because of oh, you know so because it's you know rookies and they might not do anything this year, but you're looking at the next four years. So dynasty leagues are a bit more fun. Um, I historically stay away from Bills players. I do. I historically stay away from Bills players. Bills defense, though, I have. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can you can buy Hardy on the Bills defense. That's fine. But like, I've got Foster on one team again. Picked him up because Boomer Bust candidate every week. You just never know. And mm. every once in a while, you throw him in the flex and just see. I hope you know. I hope it goes off. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, it's not, it's not hateful. Yeah, it's definitely not hateful. Ooh, now the camp schedule has been released. Planning any meetup events. Um, this is like the first year that we really could probably do meetup events. We talked about doing a beer tour. Um, mm-hmm. Cost on that got surprisingly a little pricey. It was like a hundred bucks a guy. So I'm trying to keep things kind of like Ooh. value conscious. Yeah, yeah. And if you're out of town, that's not that's fair. what I mean. That's yeah. So I'm trying to keep things a little, you know, try to be a little value conscious. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, for training camp, uh, I know they're doing only one night game at New Era. No, only doing one night practice. Night. He does hate the night stuff. The only problem that we have with uh, preseason stuff is it's all ticketed, so you got to make sure you get tickets to it, and that's kind of out of our control. Yes. We can't obtain, like, 20 tickets. It, unfortunately, don't, we don't have any pull with the organization to get tickets for stuff. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll definitely let you guys know when we plan on going places, mm-hmm. um, and then if you want to come hang out with us, you know, we'll, we'll meet up. That's that'd no be problem very at all. cool. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be super cool. Um Again, we're trying to plan a couple events throughout the course of the season uh, where we can, uh, you know, shake hands and kiss babies and have a good time, have a couple beers, and, well, you know. We're, we're once again going to have our our, our, um, our Bills uh, merch giveaway. Oh, yeah. Which we start week one yep. of the NFL season, and we give it away week 17. Yep. So, uh, it, you know, we get able to enter every day in daily contest. We did it through... Uh, what was it called again? Uh, yeah, whatever the crap. The it name was. it was yeah. a very simple. It was a very simple name. I don't but we gave it. Uh, we gave away a autographed Hall of Fame uh, Thurman Thomas helmet last yeah. year. Yeah, and, that was fun. Uh, the, uh, win- like- the winner was in Italy. The winner that won. The guy that won was in Italy. How much money that was? <laughs> I had to send it to that guy. Yeah, we only had like 250 subscribers at the time. We didn't have many. There's many more of you now. So no. we'll, we'll do another giveaway at the start of the season. And to end this episode, I'll rewind the clocks a year to your one of your favorite moments on this show. What's that? Check it out. Oh, I, no way. No way. It's not going to happen. And just as a reminder, um, we're, we're creeping up on some very unique numbers for Hashtag. Uh, just a promotional thing that we're doing for Hashtag. I didn't tell you about it. but Oh, okay. Uh, our, if you happen to be our 100th subscriber... 
you get unlimited free content of hashtag sports on YouTube. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!